Uh, <laughs> finally, before we get to Beta O'Rourke, we have R. Kelly uh, telling people his spirit oh. this week told him to do the now infamous Gail King interview. Uh, this comes from TMZ. Sources close to the singer say that R. Kelly did the interview because he is in constant touch with his spirit and tends to listen to it more often than the people around him, you think. <laughs> the interview created a lot of buzz in the media and the entertainment industry, uh, with a lot of people obviously questioning the man's innocence. Yeah. And to help us shed, this is something that's been happening a lot on, on, on news, and we actually have our very own to help us shed light on this, uh, our very own body language expert, T.D. Taylor. Miss Taylor, thank you for being with us. Happy to be here, Stephen. So uh, you've had the opportunity to study R. Kelly's interview with, with Gail King, and what is your expert take on it? Well, Stephen, naturally it's easy to assume guilt right off the bat based on his complexion. No, no. But my profession requires that I look deeper than that. What okay. I saw was the body language of a man who is, at the very least, hiding something. Okay. Look here. Mm -hmm. As you see him lightly lean to the left, that's a telltale sign that, of course, he's being dishonest. Because as we know, the left side of the cerebellum is where we keep most of what we want to keep uh, secret. That, that is not in any way medically accurate. It's not scientifically. Uh, well, look here. We see him as he starts to lean back. He's displaying clear shock and disbelief. Namely, shock and disbelief at how undeniable these accusations are. Mm. By moving mm -hmm. away from the interviewer, which would normally be a standard reaction by anyone, given the identity of the interviewer in this case. Okay, listen, forgive me for maybe putting words in your mouth, but it sounds as though you're already assuming guilt on R. Kelly's behalf. Oh, he's, he's definitely guilty. Now, we've covered the left lean and the body pull back, which right. would clearly suggest wrongdoing. Not exactly. But even more telling, if you look here, you will see Mr. Kelly with a massive erection. Oh. Now, at first glance, that may appear normal, mundane even, but given the present company in the room, it's definitely suspicious. I would never, I would never call that mundane. That's... So when we add all this up, the body lean, the pull back, but most importantly, the erect penis clearly points. Okay, I think, I think we get the point. Steven, I, think... I cannot stress it to your audience enough. The significance of the erect, veiny penis is an indication of sexual assault. Okay, that's, that's enough. That's enough well, on there is one final piece of evidence to which I'd like to draw your attention. Oh. If you stop the interview here, mm -hmm. you will clearly find yet another uh, okay. unwarranted throbbing erection, which, given the present company, would again imply sexually compulsive behavior. Okay, can we just ease up on the Gail King jabs here? It's, it's doesn't... positively engorged, Stephen, oh. and unwarrantedly so. There's no reason for a raging hard penis at this stage. No, no, I don't think this is productive. I, not, you're an expert. Is that? Are you really? Qualified? I've studied this all my life, Stephen, and I stand by my assertion that the totality of this interview needs to be taken into consideration. Of course. But the importance of that unnecessarily stiff, girthy, rod-like penis cannot be overstated. Okay, that's enough. I'm I'm done with this. Body language analyst, Miss Taylor. Everybody, thank you.